Trimming out windows can be a difficult task if you're not sure of what to do, but it's actually pretty simple to put together and I would say that this level of work is a moderate for the home improvement. The first thing that you have to do when you're trimming out a window is the sill. And once you have the sill done, everything else is really just going to fall into place with a few short measurements and some simple cuts, especially if you're kind of doing the traditional one by four with some unique trim pieces around it. In order to measure your sill, uh, what you're going to want to do is know how your side trim is going to look. We have a one by four piece with a um, backer bead on the outside for an extra piece of detail. So what we did was we created a guide block which basically had the one by four with that backer piece on it. And then we held it on each side of the window and we held it just where we wanted our uh, piece to be. We have basically made a, a quarter of an inch right in here. So we held the board up on each side in those positions and we marked it with a line. And those two lines gave us the measurement that we needed to know how far along or the length of our silk plate to cut. So the first thing you need to do is cut the entire length of the silk plate. The other thing on these windows that we ran into is we had them built out with an extra half an inch uh, added onto the window. Uh, and the reason for that was because we had uh, extra thick walls from True Cut 1x4s. Um, and I'm assuming on a lot of windows when you buy them, they're going to have a piece down here, but right along the bottom of the window where the seal is, there's a piece of trim wood. You need to rip that trim wood off because your sill is going to go right up against the seal. So the next step you're going to do is kind of rip that piece off so that you can start getting your measurements for the actual sill. Uh, measuring the sill, you basically will need a speed square and what you'll do is you'll come in and you'll hold the, the wood up and you'll measure out the distance for each of these notches in the framing of the window so that you can trace lines where you're going to have to cut your, uh, where you're going to have to cut into the window sill. And then once you have those lines measured, you need to come back and measure out the depths of each of those. So you know how deep each of those cuts is going to have to go. What we're doing is we're trying to create a template for your window sills. And if you do it correctly, because your windows are most likely manufactured windows, you can use the same template over and over and over again on each window in the house. So it seems like there's a lot of measuring here at first, but as you get going, um, it's going to become easier for you. The sill is really the hardest part of this entire window. Once you get to the, the header of the window and the sides and underneath the sill, those are just trimmed out with one by fours and really your choice of backer or crown. In, our, in the main part of our house, we have crown at the very top of each window. Um, and those are all just components that you would add on to your one by fours as you put them all up in place. So when trimming out a window, your first objective should be getting your sill, getting it cut, and creating a template for all your other windows. One of the problems we ran into with our window sills is that when we had them cut, they wouldn't fit deep enough into the window. So we actually had to measure a line along the back of the sill and rip it down using a skill saw to get the window sill to fit deep enough into the window frame. After you cut it with the skill saw, you may need to pry out the piece that you just cut off and clean it up with a chisel so it will fit deep enough into the window frame. Recheck your window sill again, and once you're sure that you have a nice, tight fit, you can go ahead and tack it in with your nail gun. 
your windowsill in place, you can go ahead and measure from the windowsill to the top of the window to determine the length that your 1x4 pieces along the side will be. Prep all of your 1x4 pieces and your header board with your decorative molding. In this particular case, we used a backer bead along each of the 1x4s and our 1x6 header. Once you have all your pieces prepped, you can go ahead and start lining them up along the windowsill bottom and tack them into place. Do not tack in at the very top of the window until you're ready to put your header up. Once you've installed your two side pieces, you can go ahead and place your header at the very top. Because you did not tack in your two side pieces, you can adjust those so that you have everything perfectly fitting before you tack in the top and the header. Now that you have everything perfectly aligned, go ahead and tack in the remaining tops of the side trim as well as your header. By doing this all at once, everything will be perfectly aligned on the exterior of the window. While something might be a sixteenth of an inch off on the inside of the frame, you're not going to notice it once everything is cogged and painted. Finish nailing in all the trim around the window before proceeding to the next step. With everything in place, you can go ahead and install any crown that you're putting along the top of the window, as well as a 1x4 just below the sill plate of the window to help support the sill plate and add a little more depth to your trim work. You'll notice it kind of looks like a Tetris board right now, but once you come back in with your uh, caulking and everything else, it'll look great. So don't worry about you know some gaps here and there. We'll show you how to fill those in later. Stay tuned in to our YouTube channel for more tips and tricks and informative episodes of our new series, Reconstructing Spirit Hill.